from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're having a CUBE conversation in the studio. We're just about ready to hit the crazy wave that is the conference season. So it's great to uh, still have some time to do some studio stuff before we hit the road. And we're excited to have a new guest, never been on theCUBE before. He's Daniel Hazarika, the CMO of Reflective. Daniel, great to meet you. Great to meet you. So you guys are working in a cool space, kind of the, the new age HR management, for, for lack of a better term. We've, we've had Patty McCord on before who, who obviously was seminal in, in kind of the Netflix culture, which mm -hmm. was I think pretty early days and kind of saying, you know, throw out, throw out traditional uh, re annual reviews, mm -hmm. kind of throw out uh, regulations around expense reports, you know, throw out kind of a lot of these traditional mechanisms to manage people and really say, you know, what are we managing people to? Mm -hmm. And we should be giving them feedback on a regular basis, and we yeah. really need to kind of bring this into the modern era. And that's smack in the middle of what you guys do. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, a, a big part of what we do is managing employees to be high performing. And that's, you know, the, the big tagline for her is high performance culture. I think right, it's, right. it's critical to have as part of that a more, you know, active and ongoing role with your employees. That's why they can do things like remove um, expense report guidelines because they know we're on the pulse of whether this person is actually performing or not. Right. And by knowing that, we can have faith that they're, we trust them, that they'll do the right thing when it comes to deciding on what they spend on. Right. So I think we sit right at the center of this and we're really excited to be a part of it. So let's back up a little bit and just yeah. give everyone kind of the, uh, the forward and one on Reflective, how Absolutely. many people are you, how, how long you've been around, yeah. um, some of the basics. Yeah, so we were founded in late 2014. Okay. Uh, we have three co-founders, um, Rajiv Behera, Eric Tai, and Jimmy Tyrell. Uh, they more or less were actually people managers themselves. Uh, they realized that this was a gap in, you know, in managing workforces and you know, classic model of technical founder and then you have more of a product person and they got together and built this really cool tool. Um, so, so what was the yeah. big hole? Because there's a ton, there's a ton of HR applications out there. There's there's big Absolutely. ones like Workday, yeah. you know, who's done been very successful on the SaaS model. What did they see that was the big hole? Even though there's all these huge traditional kind of HR applications. Absolutely, yeah. So what happened was uh, there's there's a five-ish year old Burson framework. They talk about this uh, systems of engagement and systems of record. Right. And so these these tools that you mentioned, they were great at helping catalog what happens in a business and do all the compliance processes required, right? But what happened was the world changed things uh, in terms of social media, the way people were getting information, the pace of things uh, accelerated quite a bit and these tools struggled to handle the day to day and didn't live where people worked and those are big gaps. So they saw this and said, okay, well, there's, there's something here where we can go and insert ourselves in the flow of people's work and help them actually get the information they need to be high performing. So was the, the, the entry point the annual review, what, what was kind of the entry point to yeah. get people to think about HR in a different way and to adopt yeah. the technology? I think, I think that ultimately there is some form of review that happens and they built that functionality. But what was really interesting to the market was actually the concept of real-time feedback and the mechanisms, building the mechanism by which you could actually bring that into that platform and actually factor that in when you're doing reviews, right? There's, this eliminates things like recency bias, things that, hey, a review is happening at the end of the year, I'm going to remember what happened the last three months, right. I'm not going to remember that you killed it, you know, in March of that year. So we're helping solve for that, and they, they saw great results doing right. that. So you've got all types of, of kind of little, uh, I don't know, apps is the right, right word, sure. solutions, yeah. or you know, kind of activities yeah. that enable people, both as the employee, as well as the manager, as well as the HR people, to have kind of this ongoing back and forth um, Relationship. So I wonder if you can dive into some of those applications and what's what's working really well that's different than things used to yeah. be. So the modern kind of version of what we do, because things have changed much over the past few years, uh, we have a core kind of performance management offering. We also have an engagement offering, uh, and we also have a people intelligence offering. And these are the three pillars by which we kind of enable all those people that we, you just um, talked about. And so when we go back to the performance piece, uh, there's many different components, but we believe that um, employees need feedback in the moment. They need a way to also do annual reviews. They need a way to set goals and be clear with their manager on what those are and what progress is. And we also believe that those things have to exist in the flow of day-to-day -day work, and that's why we do things like have a Slack integration, integrate with Gmail, Outlook, all these different kind of places where people actually live day-to-day. Right. -day. Uh, then you know the other layers that I spoke about are engagement. We like to be able to do broad surveys to companies and you know get a pulse on like 
high level, what, does, what, is the, what is the emotion out there? How are people feeling about management? How are people feeling about you know, even the snacks in the kitchen? Simple stuff like that. Right. Uh, and then last but not least, all of that information has to feed into somewhere so that the management of an organization can get the insights they need to make decisions. And that's where the people intelligence comes in. Okay, yeah. so there's a lot of different, different yeah. layers of the story. It's, but the one when, when I was first preparing for this interview, I'm like, oh my goodness, you're right, another tool, right? Yeah, another, yeah. Another desktop app. I forget what the statistics are of all the tabs that we have yeah. open with our Salesforce and Outlook and all these things are open. But you guys took an interesting approach because you actually integrated with some of the apps that you presume I have open, like mm -hmm. Slack, as opposed to you know kind of forcing me to have that one more tab. How does that work, and and how has that um, you know kind of impacted adoption? Totally. Yeah. I mean, this is where the the foundations of our uh, our company kind of come into play. So our founders came from uh, mobile app, mobile applications. They knew and games specifically. So they know how to optimize for things like active users daily, monthly, all that, right? And taking that lens to it, they said, okay, we really do need to encourage adoption. How do we make that happen? To your point, too many tools are open. Some are required to do your job, like email. So others are kind of optional. We're, we're, you know, we're honest with ourselves. We say, hey, we're, we're in the optional category. How do we solve for that? How do we still get people to use this? Right. So we said, okay, we're going we're gonna to plug ourselves into Slack, where people actually communicate day to day. We're going to show up in Gmail. We're going to show up in Outlook. We're going to go to all these different places where people are already working. Uh, we actually even integrate with Jira, uh, the, the engineering tool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we said, that's the way we'll actually get the information into our system that we need. And then we can service all those insights I talked about. And is it like a is it like a, a is it a pop up? Is it some in, encouragement yeah. when I do some activity, say say with you on mm -hmm. a project that you know? Oh, Jeff, by the way, do you have any feedback for Daniel? Or oh, Jeff, by the way, uh, you yeah. know somebody's looking for feedback on Daniel. Or I mean, how how does the, how does the mechanics work? And then what have you seen in terms of adoption? What works? What doesn't work? Yeah, I mean, it definitely. Uh, Ha gets traction because I think specifically Slack, and uh, you know, we're a Silicon Valley company. A lot of our earlier customers were Silicon Valley companies, right. and they all use Slack. It's, right. it's pretty easy. So yeah. very <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> so uh, I think from that perspective, it's it's really easy to use. Like you just you can see all the active recognition, for example, happening in your company. In in channel, you can also go and input recognition for other people right there, just at mention and kind of invoke that. So are they kind of channels then within Slack around? Uh, uh, recognition can be a channel, okay. but the actual input of feedback, you can do that right from the okay. Yeah. So interesting to talk about kind of feedback versus mm -hmm. recognition. H how does that play out in the real world? Because yeah. those are two very different words and yeah. two different, very different motivations. You bring up a great, great point, and it's in an ongoing debate, like how do you kind of name these two different things? Like, frankly, recognition in you know to the broader market ends up being more or less positive feedback, right? That you feel like you want to put a public stamp on. Right. But there's there's an important distinction here because there's also negative feedback and there's also just feedback that people want to give that's positive but they don't necessarily want to share that with the entire world or with the broader organization. So we wanted to create a safe space for them to be able to do that at every single in every, in every single use case. And so that's what that's where the delineation between recognition and feedback comes in is that you can go public, private, you know, public and also broadcast to the whole company, and we wanted to give people the avenue to do all those things. Right. Yeah. So I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about goals and goal management mm -hmm. and, and um, how does that kind of module work and or how does that tie back to kind of some of the corporate goals and corporate initiatives? Can you can you tie it back to your JIRA project and, and are yeah. these things um, integrated or is it kind of a standalone and does it operate like an annual goal or a quarterly goal or you know how does that piece of it work? Yeah, so the way we find, you know, the highest performance cultures doing this, they they do kind of adjust goals on an ongoing basis, ideally quarterly. I think that's probably the favored kind of happy medium right okay. now. Uh, and that does start with company level goals, then it goes to departmental, then it goes to individual or te sub team goals. And all of these people have, you know, we can call it, you can do smart goals, you know, you can do objectives and key results, you can do whatever format you want, and it's pretty flexible as a platform, but all of that cascades down and you can go work, you know, coordinate between people and get visibility. You can have public goals, private goals, and that's part of our whole commitment to transparency in the platform. Okay, and, um, and in terms of your customers and their adoption uh, at a corporate level, not necessarily the individual, is it, is it more of a stick or is it more of a carrot? Are people figuring out yeah. that they need to change and yours is a tool to give them an avenue to the new way? Or um, or is it kind of new and, and provocative yeah. and you know, I've been we've been doing annual reviews since since my dad's dad's dad, yeah. you know, I'm not quite sure about this this ongoing thing. What's kind of the reception and how's the market changing? Totally. Like with anything, uh, you know, you've your tech adoption life cycle. 
a lot of our early adopters have just picked up on the fact that the market for talent is extremely competitive now. And some have gotten to different maturity levels and understanding what they need to do to deal with that, right? Uh, our earliest adopters, they just got it right away. They said, like, we, our workforce is asking for more in-the-moment feedback. They want to know what their goals are clearly and be able to measure against them and be able to go and point back, hey, I actually achieved that or I did not. And so that has helped us a lot with the earlier adopters, just saying, like, we built something that's ideally suited to what you need to, the way you need to evolve. Right. Uh, part of, I mean, the task of any kind of innovative technology is we have to go educate the market, too. We know that universally people are struggling to retain talent. What we, what we do to educate them is inform them of, here's actually what the workforce is looking for. We've done a ton of research, HBR articles, we've seen Gallup research, we've seen all sorts of stuff that tells you the world has changed, the workforce is expecting certain things, and we've built something around, around those needs. Right. Um, and so the more we do our job as marketing to, to you know, make sure the market understands that, I think uh, the more reflective we'll see success. Right, yeah. it's funny, in one of Patty's recent uh, Medium posts, she, talk, she yeah. talks about foosball tables and, 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 <laughs> and billiard tables. Like, that's not what drives totally. employee happiness and satisfaction. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they look good, I guess, on the tour before you take the job, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I don't know. Absolutely. There's a lot of other things that, that, that drive happiness and, and, and retention in this super competitive yeah. market that's not the ping pong table. Absolutely, especially in the, you know, in the case of Patty McCord, I mean, she's indexing everything around, you want to have the highest performing people stay, and you don't necessarily you know, care to actively manage the ones who are not. And what she has you know, espoused many times is that, when the highest performing people actually love this. They love that there's transparency around the, the, the business value they're driving. They love to know exactly where they stand. They love to have feedback so they can improve and be better. And so you can see how there's a lot of like parallels here between what she's talking about that high performing cultures do and what the platform that we've built enables. Right, what about the pesky lawyers? <laughs> that are saying, you know, there's all these compliance issues, yeah. and we're still we're still operating off off of, of, of laws yeah. that were established before, and yeah. this is a little bit funky, and we're not really sure how to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, what we've actually found is so there's specific customers, even of the size of Airbnb, who will highlight that we help them combat bias. And the, the way we do this, I, and evidence that they are not biased in the way they do reviews. And the way we do this is, I think, the con is ultimately the concept of re real-time feedback. Because this stuff is being logged as it's happening, you, no one can say, oh, it's the end of the year now, and you just remember what happened in the past few months. You're ignoring all my great, you know, all my great work that happened before that. This is not fair. You know, that recency bias, they call right, it, right. is eliminated. And that actually, in the end, helps with the lawyers because we can say this was all cataloged in the moment as opposed to way later. Right. Yeah. You have to train them on contract year concept. <laughs> You're yeah. supposed to turn it up the last yeah. month <laughs> so they forget about the crappy stuff yeah. that you did earlier in the exactly. year exactly. and do well. Yeah. So, Dan, before I let you go, just yeah. you've been around a little while, you've been in the Valley, you've been at a number of startups, you've been here for about a year. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, kind of, as you've come to Reflective and been there now, what was the biggest surprise um, kind of entering this space, entering this company yeah. um, that you didn't necessarily expect now that you've been there for a little bit? Yeah, I, I think what was most interesting and actually kind of exciting was to observe how similar the the transformation that HR is going through right now is is to the transformation that marketing went through 10 years ago. I'm seeing you know the the movement to being more data driven, to getting active information on how campaigns are running, all this stuff. That that evolution is happening in HR right now. I'm seeing you know more and more people scientists. I'm seeing more and more people who are turning people management into a science. And I think a lot of that has to do with record low unemployment. The, the market for labor got so competitive that people have started really paying attention to this as a problem and trying to understand better outside of just simple compliance things. How can we actually actively manage our workforce into being high performing and happier? Right. And that's really interesting for me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for, uh, for taking a few minutes out of your day and sharing the story. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. He's Daniel. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're having a CUBE conversation in our Palo Alto studios. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.